joining us today on twitch.tv slash dota 2 canada cup high ground tv and uh with us today is trent mott Ma is it mott pat i think it's your name is really hard to pronounce i'm sorry mott pax he's uh gonna be bringing us stats for today and uh he's from the standard deviants so he had about two minutes notice and, and delivered in the clutch so we're ready to no. go it's gonna be a pretty long day four games mott my friend How's I uh, I noticed this before, but I never said anything about it. His name and our name and my name is very similar. They're very so. very similar. When I say I'm like, I want to say Mott, Mott obviously, and it's not. It's Mott, Mott, Pax. And there's I'm a very Mott. subtle difference to it. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, I'm sure it wasn't planned. Uh, we're but dot, I like dot, it. Dotted. We're good. the Mott brothers to a certain extent, so it's it's nice to have somebody who can appreciate a name like that. Yeah. And uh, that's good. He also <laughs> also has a. He showed me, uh, before the game started, he has uh, an item called Motnips in his inventory. You know those Eidolons that, that come with uh, oh Enigma now? Oh my god! How has no one thought of that before? I don't know, but it's ingenious. What a good idea! Also, he's got an inscribed gem of gold spent with 65,000 gold and my autograph in it, so... Wow, dude. Where's uh, my item, man? I mean, you already have enough. There's like the Gurgulator or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's probably not a real item, but I, I hope it is. <laughs> We've got Team Gurg with I Kissed a Gurg and I Like It. You know? That's great, yeah, yeah excellent. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, we're here, Dota 2 Canada Cup action. Uh, we had some good games last night. That was Group D or C, I believe. I'm not sure which one. Uh, it looks like we're C. We're, we're, we're C here. Uh, it was D last night. So uh, week one of the Dota 2 Canada Cup groups, group stages is almost done here, and, and I'm excited. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw this out right now. It's <laughs> Union Gaming, and uh, if they try any funny business or crazy shit. It's done. It's over. Be, there will be consequences. There will be, because, it, listen, you can only do so many things before you start to get noticed and people start to say, hey, that's a little sketchy. Let's let's maybe actually think about doing something, you know, positive here. Let's win the game without having to resort to sketchy tactics. Whereas Complexity, they're playing a game. Um, they're all players that are pretty well known from Han. Um, this is the first time I'll be casting them. Uh, I think I've and I've seen Moon Meander before, obviously, and you talked a lot about him and and how popular he is in the scene. But uh, a lot of these former players, and when we talk to a lot of Han pros, we talk about this complexity team. You know, they're they're very solid players. I'm looking forward to seeing how their skills translate over to the Dota scene. I'm very excited because also more American squads is is better. You know, I like it. I like Absolutely. it a lot. Absolutely, hundred percent. I would totally agree with you with that. And uh, well, if you guys aren't happy with your stream experience, you of course can buy. The ticket's five ninety nine in the store. It comes with Bearski. You can see it right on the right there. Bit.ly slash Bearski. And, uh, well, we're well underway in the draft here. Union Gaming have got themselves a Lycan and a Shadow Shaman. And two very powerful heroes, to both separately five and together. And remaining. that's some uh, that's some intense push action. It really is. That's uh, and, um, and, you know, the thing I actually really like about the beginning of this lineup for them is it's not only good, like, push together, but they've also got some extremely good split push. Shadow Shaman with an Ags can solo towers. Lycan can obviously uh, solo towers, and uh, I'm a big fan of this little start here. Pretty concrete. They are the Radiant, so you can maybe argue it's a little less effective, but I still think it's quite good. It's a, it's a good solo lineup. You mentioned the, the Radiant side Lycan. It's not ideal, but... It's still um, very good, though. It's it not, like, is. bad. I don't think it's as big of a deal as most people make it. It's the thing is, you, the thing is, a lot of people will say like, okay, well, if you're against a Lycan, you can always try to shut him down by setting an aggressive trial lane against him. He does a bit of damage. He doesn't have that much lockdown. Obviously, Hal's very good. It really just depends on the supports that you put with him in lane. You have a Rasta, so that's already a good tier to help out with, um, and he's a good roamer as well. Uh, but I don't see that happening for Complexity Gaming. They'll probably just put the Bat Rider in the off lane. They'll send the Brewmaster either mid or safe lane. And the problem here is I think that for shutting down Brewmaster, it's going to be very difficult for Union. I think they have to pick something with the Silence here. Uh, Scarath Mage is still available. I would definitely pick that hero up. Scarath Shadow Shaman is a very good roaming combo. Shadow Shaman is known because he can't really... He, he doesn't have the speed to kind of initiate half the time. Uh, but if you have a Scarath Mage with Concussive Shot, you're already good. Because also... Yeah. That hero's base move speed is is fucking ridiculous, yeah, man. I mean, he's got wings, man. It's it's for the flavor. All right, well that's I mean, Jakiro has wings, but his base move speed isn't like you yeah, know. Yeah, he's got two heads to carry around, dude. Okay, well, come on, think about the flavor, <laughs> Mott. If we're getting really in depth with the lore here, I guess you're right, but oh man, but they picked the silencer, so yeah, yeah. Well, that's definitely a hero with silence and uh, bands in the second round. Doom and Tidehunter, Naga, as well as the Bristleback. 
Uh, interesting Bristleback ban. I guess they think that this probably will not be an offlane Batrider. Uh, it's a possibility for Ten middle, I guess. Remaining. But Skywrath, again, still in the pool. And some information about Complexity, if you're unfamiliar with them. They have remaining. only been an official roster for Complexity for around a week and have 14 recorded games already. Previously, Stay Green. And uh, they're putting up pretty decent results thus far. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, they still have a long way to go before they can really get all of their mechanics down, and I think they have a, a lot to prove, obviously, but I think these next couple of days, especially in the Canada Cup, and, and among other tournaments, will be very important to them. If they could take down a, a oh pretty solid team... Oh, God, microphone's not mono. I am so sorry. I switched oh. microphones today, and... Uh... So you're, you're only coming out of one year? For the, yeah, I can fix that, though. Hold, please, okay. boys. All right. I know how that feels. I think, that, I, think I fixed it. Uh, apologies. But I think it's all set now. Okay, well, could be worse. Uh, you could be, you know, on the AFK overlay for this entire draft. So there's oh, that. that, too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> complexity to pick up the Marana. They have Moonlight Shadow now. Um... I really hope this is not a Cormorana. And again, I'm just biased. I mean, Cormorana can work fine. I just don't like it. It's um, okay. I mean, I think with the right setup, it's all right. But by itself, the arrow obviously is a lot less effective. But you get a lot of added damage from Starstorm. Because when you do support Morana, you pretty much do not have mana for Starstorm, like, ever. It's just not, not really a thing that happens. So, I don't know. I really like Starstorm quite a bit. And... I think it's a good offensive ability or offensive ability to use to just kind of burst down heroes and well, if you're support you don't get it. So that's the one thing I really don't like about it. I mean Team she's got a she's got a pretty good kit as far as far as abilities go. I mean, anytime you have like a global invis, it's it's really difficult to deal with. Um, obviously silencer could stop that, but really they they'll push the pace of the play with Moonlight Shadow if she gets her levels. We'll see if they run her around and get some kills mid lane with whoever is mid, which right now, if you look at it, they have a Centaur, they have a Silencer, you could send Lycan mid. A Centaur's not going to go mid, Centaur will go in the off lane or safe lane and try to get a Blink Dagger early. Again, we see more and more Centaurs go like safe lane or solo safe lane and just try to farm a Blink Dagger as quickly as possible. Um, in this game, I don't think that's really effective because you have a Lycan unless you send him mid. Um, and then you have to go kind of aggro, so... I think Centaur going to the offlane. Complexity go for the old standby in terms Radiant of your uh, Shadow Demon Marana. Set up the arrow. Soul Catch is still very good. Demonic Purge also. And uh, I think in conjunction with the Brewmaster and a Bat Rider, you could blow up someone very quickly with Soul Catcher. That's one ability that everyone kind of... You see a Shadow Demon, you're like, yeah, Disruption, good. You could combo the arrow with it. But then you're like Soul Catcher, and like that damage yeah. amplification is actually freaking ridiculous. So Yeah, especially, you know, when you factor in the Bat Rider as well, you pull someone back get that extra damage amplification on there and you can burst down even really tanky heroes you know like a lycan which sometimes you might have problems with you know normally well not normally but remaining. sometimes you see a lycan get pulled back and you know they just slam the r button run Five out immediately so yeah, yeah, yeah. they've got some really good tools to sort of deal with that and they knew full well what they were doing when they let the lycan through Reserve and time. have definitely come with a plan in mind here the one thing i i think that it was actually kind of surprising to me is that with the Shadow Demon, you don't have that, you know, Bane kind of Fiend's Grip lockdown, which is a hero we've seen less and less over the, the past couple of months, which is unfortunate. But there are just so many easy ways to interrupt him channeling a Fiend's Grip, uh, including a Global Silence. So I think it's a smart decision to go, to, to go for Shadow Demon, but they have to find another way to lock down this Lycan or just have really good Tornado Brewmaster control. Because I think if you Cyclone the Lycan for the majority of the fight while his ultimate is up, I think that's a good way of making sure he's not going to get out anytime soon um, or just causing havoc in the team fight. Yeah. And again, it really comes down to the Brewmaster and the Batrider getting early Blink Daggers. So stack up the jungle for the Batrider. Shouldn't be an issue there. Brewmaster, if he's in the safe lane, gets an easy Blink Dagger at seven to eight minutes if he gets free farm. You can go for the Enchantress. So now it's even, you can even go for an aggro tri lane even easier for complexity gaming here. So this is a very bold pickup for Union Gaming. And, I'm, and one that I'm not too sure if it's, it's going to work, so... Yeah, I'm interested to see how they actually end up laning this. Obviously, there are a couple options here. Uh, this could be a carry silencer, uh, mid lichen, or a mid silencer, mid lichen, or a mid shadow shaman and support silencer. So there are a lot of options Ten here for remaining. Union Gaming. And uh, I, I don't know. It seems like it might be a Five little greedy remaining. because there's a lot of pressure here from Shadow Demon Marana 
that rider. Brewmaster obviously is going to be interested in fighting as soon as possible, and we'll see what the last pick is here. But what Ember and Earthshaker have both been banned out, and uh, I think the Earthshaker ban is a good one. It, it does sort of deal with them trying to initiate. Echo Slam is quite good. Yeah, Echo Slam is really, really solid, I think, um, in that situation. Mm. But the, I'm looking at the way they're going to lean this reunion, and I think it's going to be Sansa Shadow Demon, or Shadow Shaman, rather, and Sinter Warren are off lane, like in mid. You could send Sansa mid, but I think it's 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 more likely going to be the Silence in the safe lane. I, I don't know, though. Yeah. I don't I, know, I though. Agree. I, because you really just want to farm as you know as hard as possible on Sansa, in my opinion. I mean, Sansa can be okay as a support, but I don't know. Jakiro is picked up as well for complexity, and uh, this is a core Jakiro, I think. Yeah, and um, that's actually huge. Core Jakiro is a hero that is played a lot recently, and you just put him in a tri lane, and you just get him to have liquid fire at like level five or six. You don't even need to have him as a core. You can even have him as support and just kind of run around and make sure he gets levels. Just as long as you make sure you get this guy levels, you get like a level three or level four liquid fire, you're in a good spot. There's no way you can really push into that. Ice Path is actually not as bad as you know people think it is now. It doesn't do as much damage, but the lockdown that it gives you is pretty solid. Uh, for that period of time and it's it's just i think it's a really smart pickup here they want to be aggressive early on for complexity and yeah, against a team with a like and i think that's the smart thing to do here so we'll have to see how it pans out they're going to go for some five man aggression down bottom they want to get some wards out here and make sure that this enchantress doesn't have a free time in the jungle and just can't roam around and I, I think also getting those wards to give vision is very important as well so for complexity we'll see what they can accomplish here um and for the laning stage for you in gaming it looks like it's exactly as we thought it would be uh, yeah, does indeed. So, no huge surprises there. Citeral going to be on the Lycan. But some introductions. Complexity Gaming, formerly Stay Green. Riser on the Shadow Demon. Limp on the Bat Rider. Swindle Melons going to be on the Brewmaster. And I believe his brother, Z Freak, going to be on the Marana. And Moon Meander is going to be on that Jakiro. Yeah, and that'll leave the Union Gaming Squad. A squad which we will watch very intently. Make sure they're not to any shenanigans in this game. So... Uh, your Peruvian line at Benjaz will be on the Sounder. Lucky the Stannon with the tag 402 will be on the Shadow Shaman. Uh, Sidoral will be on the Lycan in the mid lane. It'll be Jericho wow, playing your Enchantress. And Darkly will be on the Centaur Roadrunner in the top lane. So, Pretty much everyone gave Sidoral a uh, tango here. He has three shared tangos. So uh, a pretty nice build for him. This is going to give him a little bit of extra game against Brewmaster Harass with begins. that Stout Shield. But... Um, not sitting in the RTZ spot. No, oh, whatever. That's right. I forgot the complexity banner still exists. I should take. I, put, I should put mine on. I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, so, um, wow, the problem with the three shared tangos is that you have one every sixty seconds. So mm -hmm. if he gets harassed really hard, it's not going to matter. I don't think it's so. It's not quite as good as you know just having normal regen, but that extra gold getting you to a quick bottle can be really nice. And well, this could be a very very early kill here for complexity. It's going to be looks like perhaps on bottom lane. Yeah, they're all off the map right now, so you can see that Benjaz is playing very carefully in the top lane. It's just Moon Meander alone. Um, the Enchantress is aggressive jungling because obviously his jungle has been warded like crazy. Uh, Lucky is going to go up top. So aggro trial lane, uh, looks like they're dodging for Union Gaming. Whereas the bottom lane, it's surprising that they have a Batrider off lane and then just sending these two supports down here. They smoked up and they were trying to find something. I don't think they will. They might have to rotate top, and already you can see Moon Meander getting caught. Well, actually, that's Jericho going at the wrong time. Oh, he actually caught the creep wave, um, but he's still getting shackled by Lucky. And there should be a storm coming in, and yeah, Moon Meander should go down to first blood here. Nicely played, even though Jericho kind of almost screwed that up. Yeah, little, that was a little awkward, but I'm a little surprised Complexity don't initiate on bottom there with that little bit of space, but they would have been moving into the creep wave, so instead they choose just not to... Moving on that. No. Uh, Lycan Wolves, this is really smart from Sidoral, and this will help him survive. He doesn't need the Lycan Wolves to CS, potentially. He just needs them to stay alive. And as long as he's getting vision of the opposing team, uh, it's worth it. So we'll see a rotation back to top. And I, I was surprised they sent Z Freak and uh, Riser down bottom to begin with, but they need to go top now because Moonbeander is going to have a rough time for the next couple of moments here. Um, he's already taking tornado damage. He's already below half health again. He will have the creep wave under his tower, but a rotation, a smoke gang, Jericho roaming through. Meanwhile, Riser might come in there looking for a disruption. An arrow's going to see up through. We'll connect on Jericho, but uh, no real damage to come out, so. Yeah, not, a, not quite connecting there, there, but yeah. mid lane, how is this lane shaping up? Brewmaster is doing very well for himself. Lycan only yeah. with one CS. Yeah. 
So this is to be is expected. This is to be expected because Brewmaster owns solo heroes yeah, or melee heroes rather. Melee heroes. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant to say. Um, and this is even with this is even without a point in Drunken Haze, so this potentially is going to get worse for the Lycan. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Swindle probably gets uh, at least one point in Drunken Haze before it gets six, but we'll see. I mean, you don't have to. Uh, even this just right here is really good. You just clap him and then right click him a few times. There isn't too much they can do about it. Moonmeander Top is not getting a lot of CS either. Uh, but that's you know, okay. Silencer similarly is also getting pretty much nothing. So I mean, as long as you're getting experience with the Jakira, it's fine. They're diving him though. Ooh, look out! Arky looking for the stomp and the shackles double edge blown up. Ooh, arrow misses. A little overzealous there, and still level one on the Shadow Demon, which is pretty. Uh, it's a pretty big problem. I mean, they haven't really made anything happen with this little roaming duo. Which is definitely something that you look. I mean, when they spend the first minute and a half roaming like that, they get no kills. It's a pretty huge deficit. So, yeah. complexity definitely at a little bit of a disadvantage here so far. But with mid lane going well, perhaps Swindle Melons can bring this one back for them. Uh, I think... And this is really smart play from Jericho. You can't really go in this Enchantress if she has any creeps. They're just going to block the way of the arrow. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem. You have an Enchantress who's jungling like crazy. Arrow's going to sail through. Oh, just not connecting. Jericho has slowed down a little bit too much, and he like, just mistimed that arrow. So I think right now, with Jericho jungling, he could get a lot of experience. And the pressure that he's putting on is fantastic, which is something we don't see too often. When you're an aggro jungling Enchantress, sometimes it's rough to get kills, but... They've done a nice job of harassing and making sure complexity are getting just kind of thrown off uh, with this lane. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hmm. a little fight there, and uh, it's actually going to end up being bottom. But uh, sort of continuing on what you were saying, a big problem is that all these stuns in the top lane require setup. So if Riser is just even a little out of position, does not have disruption available, they can't really stop anyone from just running at them. So I like what what uh UG are doing thus far arrow coming in this is what they're looking for this should probably be a kill in the centaur very tanky but looks like they are gonna get it in the end yeah that's huge that gives riser up to almost level three here z freak should be at level three as well moon under level four almost five so um that's actually really big because jericho like you spotted out here he's just jungling now they've rotated out of the lane and i think that was actually a poor decision there's there's no real reason for them to stop the aggression in this top lane and give them any free reign um and um, I actually had just received a, a Twitter message from the manager, um, Beef of Complexity, and and they were really they were looking for you know uh, how they're doing since uh, their inception in Dota, and, and he says they're they're doing very well. Uh, they played some games up against obviously Fnatic and Empire. They won one Fnatic, I believe, Empire. O2, but very close games as he mentioned, and obviously a couple other really big games. One one M5, one one MYM, one one PR. These are teams that are very solid in the European scene, so. I think this team might be here to stay, and I'm excited now for Complexity and their new lineup. I'm very excited. Again, you and I both a big fan of American Dota. Yeah, and oh, Moon top lane. He's going to catch a stomp. There is a three-level double edge available, and Moon may be going to go down here if Darky wants to commit to this. No, he does not. With the Bat Rider coming over, Moon has no mana, just wants to get the Liquid Fire on there. There it goes. In comes Limp. Does not have Lasso. Only level five. Jericho coming in as well with a bunch of creeps now, and... In the end, Darky is just a bit too tanky, is going to salve up here. A little unfortunate that they're not able to grab this one. But in the meantime, Silencer is farming quite a bit, which could be a problem. It looks like maybe he's actually going uh, uh, Midas here. We'll find out. I don't know about the Sage's Mask. I'm not sure what he's really building into with that. But I, I, I'm i not a huge fan of the Midas on the Silencer. I really just, I think when you see someone like Burning play a Silencer, he likes to get that Aggative Scepter as quickly as possible. And in this situation, when you have a Lycan, there's really no point in going for... On Midas, so this could just be start of uh, treads, and I really hope that it is for Benjaz. But at the same time, Midas isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, UG know they want this game to go long, so maybe there's an argument to be made for it. But the problem is that if things start going badly, that Midas is really going to hurt them because it's not going to be you know an Orchid or uh, an Aghanims or something like that, and they're going to get an all out of Sidorall here. Even though there is no lasso, he's a little afraid of the disruption combo with the arrow. And now they're going to continue on down bottom, try to catch Ben Has. He should not get caught by this. Should know what's going on. Man, I got to say, you look at Swindle, he is absolutely dominating this mid lane. And offlane was going pretty well until that bat rider left as well. So wow, he has 46 last hits at 640 and almost has his blink dagger already. So 
We're talking about, you know, the other lanes weren't going so great for complexity. Bottom is all right. Uh, not great. Top is a little bit of a mess, but mid lane is going so well that an early blink dagger from Swindle Melons could definitely be a huge game changer here. It's 50 gold really away from it at this yeah. point. I, I mean, mean it, it talked about seven minutes. It's going to get yeah, there. Yeah, it's seven minutes. And, you know, it's not a free team fight with this early of a blink, but it's fairly close uh, to just being able to win the team fight outright this yep. early with the blink dagger your positioning is just going to be so good darky disruption down goes the macro pyre as well as the ice path he's going to stampede not going to make it out nice play by complexity getting a he kill. was just standing there and i'm not sure what for he, he realized maybe that there was some action happening he was waiting to stampede for bottom lane if benjaz got caught out maybe they have an understanding that there's a gang train coming, but Lemp's gonna Firefly get shackled up, and uh, now I don't know what they're gonna do here. Oh, now there's boy. the last word. Lemp getting caught out, Curse of the Silent getting low, about to fall. He might be able to deny himself. He's bottle charging up and actually will live. Very close. Rotating Swindle, he has that blink dagger. He's ready to go. Yeah, and we'll this see is if what they can find on. anything on the back end of this. This is this is the goal. Swindle Mounts is coming in. He's gonna find Lucky. Only Ether Shock now. Finally, there is a hex. In goes Swindle Mounts. Immediately uses the clap. There's the hex. He might not even have to ult. He is gonna pop it. Out goes. Nope, no stun quite yet, and oh boy. Oh my god. 1 800 relay, please. If I had the whistle, I would play it. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. This... And you, you and know, I... game crash, I will say, Dota has been crashing quite a bit for me lately. Uh, you know, it crashed at the beginning of this game. It yeah. seems like every time I start something, it crashes. So, uh, yeah. No, it's fair. I mean,. It I don't know. I, I don't know if we would give the same luxury to Union if they said somebody crashed. I think, but that's just how it is, and that's how it's been for the past couple of days. Unfortunately, Union's going to be scrutinized for everything they do. There's nothing we can really do about that. I mean, unfortunately, they're you know so far everything seems to be just fine, but yes, uh, you know they put themselves in a position where they're under a lot of scrutiny. From they the have team. to earn our trust back. Mm -hmm. but here, here we go. Looney Lanes of uh, Pro Dota. And, you know, this core Jakiro is something that we've really only been seeing recently. So, uh, rather low percentage of the time. And Silencer, he hasn't been played in too many games, but again, starting to become more popular. But up in the air is the Shadow Shaman. Silencer is dead, killed by the Fire Panda. Lucky is stuck, drops the Aether Shock. He's even going to get Lasso. This is a very dead Shadow Shaman. Hex available, not going to use it. Leap away by Z Freak. And, you know, it's talking about a free team fight. And, well, there you go. I got two easy kills off the back of that Blink Dagger. Yeah, they're actually trying to pressure top while that's all happening. So Union making the smart decision. There was no stampede, and I don't think Darky had a TP scroll. He had just TP top. So, and also with the double damage rune, they'll they'll put some pressure on this tier one tower. And while they lose two heroes, this could be worth it for Union gaming. This is the problem with a Lycan. He'll just come up, he'll howl, and uh, all of a sudden your tier one tower is dead. And that's your safe link tier one tower. So that's a bit unfortunate that that happens. Swindle is putting some pressure on the bottom lane. That shouldn't go down. They're still pressuring top. So now you've got to make a decision for complexity. And this is where you're really, really just kind of annoyed. You're, you're like, well, what do we do? There's a Lycan, and they're kind of split pushing up, push, split pushing us. How do we deal with this scenario here? So Yeah, and I mean, that team fight was sort of the result of this top lane, right? They, they committed a lot. Uh, Union committed a lot to this top lane to make sure they really won it. But as a result, mid was kind of a, a disaster. Melee lane versus Brewmaster. You cannot expect that to go well. And they just were not able to pressure Swindle Melons at all. So he got exactly what he wanted. And he just gets the bottom tower as well. Has another 1,200 gold here. We'll see what he purchases up. It's going to be Treads. All right, well, I don't know. I mean, now they need to put pressure on the tier one tower mate. Otherwise, that trade's definitely not worth it. So it looks like they'll well, maybe see a fight break out. There's no problem split, obviously. And actually, Swindle has to go home. So this is kind of tough. Liquid Fire is doing a nice job of sort of pushing this back. The Centaur Conqueror is actually tanking this up nicely, but he'll die. So, uh, I don't know. This is kind of a, a hectic team fight. Benjaz does have his global now, and they should have Stampede as well. So, mm -hmm. this might be the fight that Union's looking for. I don't know if you really commit without a Blink Dagger on your Centaur, though. So Yeah, there's also no Blink Dagger on the Bat Rider, though. So, he's not going to be quite as effective. They're going to be relying on Disruption to set that up. And also, notably, Moon is really not doing too great this game. Only 26 last hits really wants to get towards that mechanism does have the buckler i believe on yeah. the courier yes he does so not, he's, not he's getting away. close but the earlier you get that mech the better and then you with this max liquid fire you just group up and par start pushing down towers and uh complexity going to be looking to do that sooner rather than later yeah i think at, at this point you know they'll they'll put some harass with liquid fire in the tower swindle's gonna back up he does have split now um they could blink clap if they really want to here and maybe just push them back. So, I mean, you, you talked about Moon having a bit of a rough time, but to be honest, he's a Jakiro that was up against a pretty much aggro tri lane, and he didn't yeah. really get that much help. 
Um, but they're doing work here. This tower is actually gone. Yeah, they didn't deny it either. That liquid you fire is just so good now. Swindle Mountain's forward going to take down this creep. Jericho, I don't think, is in too much danger of dying uh, unless they commit the ultimate here. And there's also a Stampede available. So Complexity, I think, smartly are going to pick a better fight here. They really want the Batrider to have Blink. There it is. There it is, yeah. That's a that's a big step for them because it's going to give them initiation that can get past that stampede. So uh, it's a it's a good step for them in the right direction. And Silencer is going to end up going for this Midas, and it doesn't come until 11 minutes. This late. is very slow, but I mean Union, like I mentioned, is definitely building towards the later parts of the game with this one. You know they know that in the late parts of the game they have a big advantage here, but unfortunately, as soon as the mech is done from Moon. Is it done now? Yeah, it is. I mean, there's just going to be some relentless pushing now, and I'm not sure that there's anything they're that gonna, they're going to deal with this. Tower. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this mid tower is going to be down here. And my shadow. shadow, you know. But uh, is it really going to matter? The global's going to come out. They will catch out Swindle before he can get his ultimate off. He gets shackled, stomped as well. But great defensive wow. disruption to keep him alive and afloat. No mana, however, to work with in terms of getting his ult up. And they do last in the lichen. They lose the tower. Could have gone a lot worse for complexity. Still not done yet. But uh, now the end of the fight has has come and gone. So. Good execution by Union Gaming. They do make it so that Brewmaster Radiant's cannot ulti with the attack. Silencer Mana Drain. And uh, they Complexity also miss the arrow when they drag back the Lycan. So not able to secure the kill there. A little bit of messy execution by Complexity. But like you said, definitely could have gone worse. And uh, top lane, not in deny range quite yet. But I think Moon's just might. Moon is definitely considering walking over there and just liquid firing the tower. Yeah, I think maybe they want to get a kill on Darky first. They, they will be able to with the haste now on Limp. He'll just be able to walk up. He has no lasso, actually, so maybe not. They uh, should still be able to get him. Through. Oh, boy. Macro fire That's a macro fire. Juke. But there's the dual breath. He does not have Stampede for 35 seconds. Also on mana. There's the purge. Darky is going to be brought down, and this should be another pretty much free tower for complexity. Just this Core Jakiro, the max liquid fire this early is so brutal. It's actually it's so fantastic. Yeah. It's like... If you could somehow fit him in your lineup, and uh, you'll be able to just absolutely decimate towers, as you could clearly see. There, there's nothing you can do about this. The one thing I'm concerned about is, is Union Gaming still don't have Serpent Wards unlucky, and I really thought they were going to be able to give a lot of room for him because, I mean, you have you have a couple of heroes that can juggle the Lycan even, as well as the uh, Enchantress, and even the Centaur to a certain extent, but they gave a lot of room to Benjoss just to make sure he got his Midas. So there's still no level 6 with Serpent Wards up for the Rasta, and I think that's very important to have. I mean, Shadow Demon already has oh, his Lycan, he's grabbed up. Swindle Mountains is here, does have ultimate, but there is the ulti from the Lycan. Is he going to make it out? Yes, 250 HP. And a little surprised that Complexity didn't just continue pushing top. Silencer ultimate is still on cooldown for another 15 seconds. And really, that's the only thing that Union can rely on in these fights to sort of win them. But... Citerol needs to be a bit careful. He's using the wolves to scout. He knows where Swindle Melons is, so there should not be a problem here. And now I'm starting to wonder what you do here for Complexity to make sure that if you get your ultimate off, or if the Lightning gets his ultimate off, how do you stop him from just running away? Oh, the arrow mid lane. Wow. Jericho caught out of position, but... They're not ready to go on that one. Yeah, they that was just... Zephyr's like, yeah. You know, there's let's also, see what there's happens. A, there's a Stampede available, so they probably don't get that kill. No Star Storm, like I mentioned. Uh, although Z Freak is doing very well for himself with 800 gold treads, Midas or uh, gloves of haste, God Midas, and that's probably going to be turned into a maelstrom. Yeah, so. I mean if he can transition into a, you talked a lot about how you need to have a bit of advantage in late game, but if Z Freak can transition into a core, which is plausible at this point, then all of a sudden you've got yourself a winnable game here later on down the road. So. We'll see. Swindle is way out of position, and he's not going to be able to blink. Uh, actually, he will. I thought the Wolves were going to attack him, but they didn't get an attack off, so he gets out alive. That was a gang train coming down bottom. Yeah, that was a lot of people. That could have been very, very ugly. Maybe forced ultimate there. Maybe he dies anyway, so good that he's able to escape. He does have blink again. He needs to get out of here, though. Oh, boy. He knows what's happening now. That Swindle's was, uh... just breaking ankles right now, and he's actually trying to bait this. All right, the well, rest of the team is moving over. Here they come. Disruption on the back end. There's the global silence, but the split has already occurred. Up in the air is the centaur. The rest of complexity coming in. Lucky, he gets pushed back, is going to be caught. His disables are gone, and they're not going to get too much else. Oh, they're going to find Jericho. Actually, Lasso is available, and he is completely dead. Ice Path, they even use the Stampede. They're going to try to re-engage. Down he goes. Morana picking up that one. Moon is way in the center. There's the mech, though. Finally gets that off. Macro Pyre down. Darky, he's going to go down as well. And Union Gaming crippled by this early Brewmaster strength. And 
now Ben has. He's maybe dead as well. If he goes down, this is a disaster for Union Gaming. Oh, lucky. Three to nine. He lucky. He TP's in. He's dead as well. Caught the arrow. Triple kill for Z freaking. Oh boy, Union Gaming have now got a very hard game on their hands. You you disengage as soon as that primal split goes off. I don't run. care who Who's dies in that run. scenario. Get the hell out. There's no reason to fight into that, especially when your like is nowhere near the engagement. There's no reason. You have an Observer Ward close to the Roche, but you know who's coming through, which was the entire team of Complexity. Very smart play from Complexity. Really good for, obviously, Swin will get the Primal split off. Pretty poorly timed, ultimately coming out from uh, the Global Silence on Ben Haas. So yeah. and, that was uh, really awful. And with that just enormous amount of gold that Z Freak just got, he's like, you know what? I'm getting Midas. We're in, boys. And now, the, what you were talking about is absolutely a possibility. Transitioning into a core and taking this game later for complexity is looking better and better with Z Freak just getting a lot of kills in that fight. Triple kill for him. And that opens up some doors that previously were not an option for complexity. Yeah, I mean, now they just need to play solid Dota and, and really react to what Sidral is doing, I think. And he already has Necro 1, so... It becomes kind of a bit of a problem here to be able to lock down and kill this like and he's gonna get farm no matter what you do to him unless you can yeah. somehow lasso and burst him down fast enough but that's very difficult um and the team that shouldn't be pushing maybe as heavily as uh, uh as the rating team are getting the towers you look at complexity they're they're leading the way in the tower goal there's still that tier one tower down bottom that complexity are, are trying to defend so yeah. and it looks like moon meander is going to go for a yule scepter here which i think is a smart pickup as well so oh that's a courier that's actually huge what, what kind of money we got on this? 325 like gold. Just a four staff recipe. Actually, there was four staff recipe on that. That's uh, that's not great. How's that worth 325? I don't know. I think recipes are bugs still. Hey, like what? That's not 325 gold. I don't understand how that works. Well, either way, they get a kill down bottom. That's lucky getting caught out. Lucky's been not so lucky. Oh, never mind. I clicked on the wrong courier. Failfish. Did you? Did I do the same thing? Yeah, All right, we're both dumb. We'll, we'll, we'll. <laughs> no comment. Sage's mask on the dead courier. So. Okay, I was like, what? That doesn't make sense. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> All right. I'm going to get the tier two tower bottom. And yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that Union can do con to contest this. They've got the right idea at this point. I think Sidoral just needs to split push like crazy. That is their only way back into this one is just taking it mega late and abusing the fact that they do have a Lycan, get a couple Roshans. They need to win a team fight though before they can get Roshan. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Top tower I don't know. Yeah. I'm actually surprised. I thought Complexity would TP somebody back. Now they go. There's the ultimate coming through. Oh, force. He gets him. Lasso. Lasso. There's no force staff though. He just used it. But in comes the dual breath, the ice bath, and the macro fire. Sidoral oh. is dead. What a play by Complexity. Nice job there by the Bat Rider. It's deny range. The towers in deny range. Oh, wow. Right. That was so huge for Complexity too. Yeah. Things have, really gone, well things have gone from bad Dyer's to worse here for Union Gaming. And what's the end game? I mean, what what can they hope for here? An Aghanims on Benhaz will certainly help. It increases the duration and uh, also does extra damage. z Freak going to take some... Uh, nope, he's actually going to leap out of there. But, oh boy, Riser. He has found himself in a bad position. And What? Really? What? Really? Really? Uh, you have reading observer words. You know exactly where complexity is. I, I guess. I can't say I agree with that I, decision. Moonlight Shadow was on cooldown. I don't really know why they use that. Yeah, in and that now situation. this is, oh, this is so good by complexity. They decide, oh, he just blew global, boys. We're moving in. Going to Roche. There's no way you can fight now if you're a union. There's yeah. no global. I mean, I, I guess you have server words still. You still have CMP, but... They don't know this is happening. They no, have no I mean, idea. This well, is just, this is not good. I, you know, if they had a medallion, maybe this is a, a bit easier for complexity. But this is still, you know, the Roche is going to die sooner rather than later. And this is going to give them some ability to push into tier two, maybe even tier three. So, good yeah. decision here by complexity. And there's no tier two tower to push into top lane for Sidoral. So, he kind of has to hope that he can get to the tier three tower or at least get close enough to force the TP back. But I bet by that time, I mean, their Roshan's going to be done. They'll have the Aegis up on Moon. I, I don't know. I don't know who you give it to right now. Swindle Melons, maybe, because if he gets initiated on, he can still ulti. I don't think so. He's really not had that issue. Yeah, Moon, I think, is the right decision. Uh, you have so many low cooldown abilities that it, it, it actually makes the most sense in this situation, although Mac is a bit longer. But, I mean, still pretty good, though, the slow you're not going to kill this Brewmaster, I don't yeah. think. He's too tanky. He's at got this point. 
probably. Exactly. And he's building uh, towards a BKB, it looks like. And I like this decision just to guarantee yourself the ultimate. After the global, you just use BKB, pop off that ultimate. And that's a good way to deal with silencer, obviously. So. Now. Thanks Next for yeah, yeah. yeah. And th this is, I mean, the farm is just not there for I think UG to to sort of get back into this one. And you know, the first time we take a look at the graphs here, it's 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 ugly. Seventy five hundred yeah. net worth for complexity and a bit less for XP. So Dyer's they're closing down the tier two here. Attack. And again, there's just not that much that they can do on this. And uh, yeah, BKB not an extremely common choice, Dyer's but you need in this game against this, global yeah, silence. Against the global silence, it's a really good. Uh, really good pickup just even if it's that. not been that big of an issue thus far so will just make the right decision yeah this is absolutely what you need to do and uh because if they're you lose, looking at this yeah if you lose a team fight possibly a huge opportunity oh, okay that was a pretty sweet deny jericho picks that one off they lost a tier three top that is not worth their range racks is taking a ton of damage and this is the problem with just letting a light and go mm -hmm. they if they lose this that's a huge mistake and this is what oh, i was talking okay. about you know just Split push out with the Lycan and try to make it happen. And that is what they're going to do. And that's not a bad trade at all for Union. I mean, they're pretty even on towers at this point. And they just took down a tier three. So I'm they... kind of surprised they let him go and just sit up there while they were taking roast and they rotated mm -hmm. mid. I don't know what the thought process is. I think was. complexity at this point just need to push out their lands a little bit and just move in on uh you know on rax they need to get over the tier three take down a and sort of give them an opportunity to just open up the game for them because at this point it's getting a little sketchy now with lichen starting to amass some farm you saw what just happened and the range racks is going to stay at this hp so you know it's pretty easy at this point for it to just get pushed in and and die you know so complexity i think are going to push through top it's a good idea yeah, I think right now it's just take the outer towers for complexity and try to find a way to stop this lichen from doing what a lichen's supposed to do. Limp making a little cheeky move there in right. bottom, but hold on, Sam's flaming me. I don't know what I did wrong, but I'm having some trouble here. <laughs> Sam, can you relax, dude? Top lane complexity is formed up. Looks like they are going to be pushing in. Four heroes are here. Swindle melons with a double damage rune as well as that BKB is going to be looking uh, complexity just know they need to get into the base sooner rather than later bot's are up for the Radiant's bat rider so he's going to be involved in this top. fight even though he's pushing out bottom lane right now and tier two is going to go down for free i imagine the bat rider will probably come over for Radiant's the tier three and uh fallen. and he comes and, uh, looks and, like complexity uh, are just an immovable an immovable force here they're just going to charge down yeah, they're, they're looking just to get. A, I mean, they have a DD on Swindle Mons as well, and this is they've kept the Lycan close enough. They push up most of the lanes and make this pretty nice for them. Yep. The only lane that was really a problem was top lane. Oh, oh, to oh. Fight class, so. He blinked the wrong. Yeah, way. He forces the long, wrong way with Lucky, and Swindle Mons is gonna pop the BKB. Does have Primal Split available? He wants to get the most out of that double damage rune. There is the Aegis, and they might just wait for these wards to expire before they reinitiate here. With global on cooldown, there's not too much danger, but there's a really good stomp. He gets two with the double at Swindle Melons. Is gonna go down before using the ultimate Moon Meander. Now, Complexity is in a very, very stuck position. They do not have all the heroes they need. Z Freak is gonna make it out, and uh, well, Moon Meander is not. A little sketchy there for Complexity, and maybe a window of opportunity for Union Gaming. They don't need much. God, Lycan's such a dumb hero. Cyril just sits on the backside. He literally throws down his wolves and his necro units, and he hits Howl, and he just kills Riser immediately. There's, like, nothing he can do. So, like, Cyril, and they stopped him from pressuring, but apparently that didn't matter. Like, he, they just take the fight, no problem, and the tier 3 tower is still at, like, half HP. So yeah. now you've got to find a way to deal with Lycan first and foremost in these engagements. Vengeance is going, he's already got his axe. He's going straight for a refresher orb. When that happens, then this becomes a huge issue. Swindle Melons, like you mentioned, could get his Primal Split off. I think that's the key. Getting your Primal Split off, and once you have that, you can maybe zone out or at least get a couple of kills and go from there. <sighs> this is getting tough now, I think, for Complexity. They've reached the point where they're not quite at the point where Marana has a ton of farm, where she's doing a lot of right-click damage, and where Union Gaming is starting to really hit their stride. So. Yeah, I mean, the problem is they sort of backed off there, and 
when they get re-engaged on and there's no BKB for Swindle Melons, things get really hard for him to actually get that ultimate off. So I think maybe they're going to be a little uh, more adamant about force and engagement there. The wards are annoying, but I'm pretty sure Lucky, yeah, he's those are only level 1 wards. So it's actually not too bad with the mechanism. They Most of their heroes have a good amount of HP. Uh, besides Riser, he is, he is uh, the lowest for sure, but... I mean, this is just a, such a tough position to be in. Like, I think for complexity now, they're sitting back in their farming, and that's fine. I, they have to make sure that like he just doesn't keep farming like this, or at least put some pressure on the lanes, make sure they're all pushed out. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have a smoke riser, like, I, I, and I think a smoke I, would be really good. I mean, complexity can consider waiting for this Aegis, but I think as soon as Global's on cooldown, they just have to push and. Unfortunately, it's back up. Maybe they'll try initiating on the silencer instead. They need to figure out another plan here to be able to sort of fight through this uh, team fight, which last time just, it's the last fight they just got absolutely wrecked. And I don't really, I mean, at this point now, I think I, there's, I, still, if, there's still a lot of options. You, you have the dire side advantage, and that's the big thing. They have the Aegis, um, assuming they can get a pick off beforehand. Or they could just sneak in there without any trouble. I mean, the problem Ooh. is that they are they have a pretty slow team until someone gets a medallion. Like, they can't actually kill it that fast. Yeah, there's not really a lot of armor reduction on their team. Um, I don't think there's any, in yeah. fact. And, and look so. at this. I mean, UG know their way into this game is definitely with that refresher. And Darky is just sitting right behind Ben Has. Wants to make sure that nothing bad happens to him. And there's no. a Moonlight Shadow gank. And this <laughs> Something is just bad not might happen. happen. I mean, there's three heroes here, I think, to disengage this, and Ben has his even already seen away. Yeah. Okay, well. Uh, complexity don't go to the lane, they go into the jungle instead, and they don't find a hero. And actually, that's just Moonlight Shadow Wasted. But uh, I do want to give Complexity props. They've done a nice job of pushing out the lane since, uh, you know, they lost that top tier three and lost a lot of damage in the range racks. But one bad engagement, and if top's pushed in, then all of a sudden... Yeah, it's just gone. And then Complexity, yeah. this game is going to be, you know... It, as soon as this racks, this set of Raxes die, this game gets really hard for them. For them to win from behind is much more difficult for you than for Union Gaming, who, I mean, they're down quite a bit of net worth and XP, and uh, well, it's it's still going to be a pretty easy game at this point for Union Gaming to get back into. So we'll have to find out. Complexity, I think, need to force something. It looks like they are going to be waiting for this uh, Roshan and. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Otherwise, they could be in a bit of trouble. As Trent just pointed out, I mean, pretty soon there's going to be a refresher. Yeah, and and when you get to that refresher point, it doesn't it gets, matter if you're going to be KB. Like, it's, it's an average Roche. So. How many times have we seen a refresher, Aghanim, Silencer, win games? the game but, sometimes. Yeah, it's just really difficult to deal with, no matter what you have in your team. There's a Manta style now uh, coming out from the Mirana, so Z Freak at least has a bit more damage and more to work with. Is that an arrow sailing through on Jericho? God, he is so freaking dead. That was beautiful. They had complete vision of him with his Observer War here. Long range arrow. Uh, they actually get a non-moving target. He just sits there and takes it to the face. So that poor doe goes down. Uh, no fluffy tail for you. Yeah, and well, is this the opportunity that Complexity have been looking for? We'll have to find out as Limp and Moon Meander are in the top jungle. Not yeah. quite in position, but... It really looks like they are content to wait for this Roshan, and if they don't make something happen with this Rosh, I think Union Gaming will pretty easily start taking this one back. Again, but you also have to worry about what Z Freak gets, and, and then maybe even you know Brewmaster getting an Agonist. Sure. Is actually he actually does have Manta now, so he's becoming he's becoming pretty farmed. He does right click, but one more item, and he'll really be fine. I think like a Maelstrom Mjolnir or something like that. But yeah, I think maybe he goes for BKB next, even though there is that Agonist coming out for the Silence or so. There's a couple of options here. Again, top lane is getting pressured. They, they've just sent... Moonmander's been up here for, it seems like, the past five minutes just dealing with this wave. Um, he'll macro pyre just to push it back, and he's done a nice job. But there's a smoke of deceit. They're looking for the Whoa. silencer. Global's going to go. So that's down, but... Yeah, and uh, Limp is super silenced. Is that like Ben has his, uh, He's just out of here, so... Oh, boy. Ooh, wow. Link Dagger for Sidoral, and yeah, I mean, full rat mode for Union Gaming is definitely the best option here, and, but, you know, say what you will about it, but it, it's definitely their best way back into this one, at least for a while. Eventually, I think they are just going to be able to straight up fight, but that probably won't be for another 10 minutes or so. Um, 
And the Necro 3 also comes out from Moonmander, so they're going to counteract with their own Necro. It's not ideal, obviously, uh, but it's certainly something that could help them push the lanes back and get things going in their favor. It'll also help them roast rather fast as well. I mean, speaking of which, it's up and available. There is only the Abdire Observer Ward, but the Centaur Conqueror is going to spot this out. It goes straight into the roast pit. So they have an understanding that this is up, and, and this should be a point of contention. If Union Gaming are able to take a fight here, they could suddenly turn this around and maybe even get not only a tier two, tier three, tier one, which is still bottom, but even a set of racks, like we said, top. And Swindle's trying to do his best to push that in. He also has 4K gold, so uh, this is going to be tricky. But if they take a fight at the Roche Pit, Complexity should have enough buybacks, and they have this tier one tower to TP into, and the tier two bottom as well. So that's the one problem if you're on Union side. The other issue here is Union know exactly what's happening because of that creep in the Roshan Pit, but it looks like... They are not at all in a position to contest this, but I mean, what I was talking about earlier, this is going to take complexity quite a while to actually take down, but it looks like Union... It's faster than before, at least. Yeah, I think Union have just forfeited this, and they're hoping that the global is enough to keep them into this, and he is getting very close to that refresher orb. Yeah, I mean, Sammy's going to go bottom lane. Swindle actually spotted out Darky, but he's able to just get out. I mean, there's no way they can get the kill there, but uh, Sam P forced to be used. Not that big of a cooldown, but still pretty nice. Aegis oh, taken for charged. Moon yet again, and uh, Refresher is pretty much done here for Benjaz. He has the recipe. He actually has a plenty to buy it. He actually just bought the... No, he actually just bought the he needs recipe. 400 gold. He's pretty I, he had 3,000 gold, and then I checked the courier, and then he had the recipe on it, and I thought that he had already bought it, but... Man, that wasn't hard. the case. But BKV for Limp, and that's just another tool to help them continue these engagements. But Refresher does not care about your BKV. So. We've, we've made a big, we've made a big uh, roar about this Refresher for the sound. So let's see how well it yeah. actually does in these fights. Because if they get a Blink Lasso off on him and he dies, he can't even get the second uh, silence off. Then it that might not even bad. matter. But yeah. That, I mean, that's at this point, I think that's what they have to do. Earlier, they've been lassoing, you know, Lycan or here other heroes, but I think this time around, it does probably have to be the silencer. And what are they waiting for? What's Swindle Melon's building towards? Should be an Ags. Actually, no, he's got a plate mail. He's getting okay, an well, grass, so it's that's done. Huge. I think they need to move. Like, it's go time. This game only gets harder. Yeah, the arm reduction is actually huge. Um, getting through some of the tanky heroes. First and foremost, and Union, and secondly, taking out Towers, which have been a bane of their existence for a period of time. Um, and it makes him tankier, so... Again, the problem, though, is that this Lycan still does a, a shit ton of damage, even with an Assault Kuros on the opposing team, so... Um, he also has 3,000 gold, so Sidoral with the Blink Dagger, which was just more for positioning than anything else, which is a smart play. Well, Blink they're gonna move on Jericho. Lane. I think he's, he's just dead. dead. Yeah. yeah, he's dead. Does not have too much HP, and... Well, look at what's happening top! Oh, boy. <sighs> This is going to be... Uh, rat is real. Yeah, the rat is real. And complexity, it's decision time for them. Are they going to try to defend this? You have to go back. You cannot let a Rax fall for free at, at all. I, I, and and I don't know how many you send back, but this oh, is where Sitterall. you say... Did they see him turn it? I don't think they saw him turn invis. They're going to TP back some heroes anyway, but... Very real scenario here is that Sitterall just walks up. He's invis, pops off the necros, and instantly the Rax is die. And complexity are rotating heroes over. This, this is going to be, be enough. a bait, though. There, yeah, there, there's, there it goes. They're going to try to take down these Necro units while the Glyph is up and available. And the Necro Warriors should fall here. That's actually huge. And they want to get the Necro Archer and Wolves, too. This is, okay. I mean, this is a big problem, though. Now, Complexity's options are extremely limited. They pretty much just have to push through top. This right? is like... They can't push through any other lane, because if not, top's just dead. We used to talk about, like, Naga Siren and Rat, and that was annoying. And just stuff that, you know, like, Nature's Prophet and that kind of Rat. But this is... This is what we see Lycans and, and what they should be doing, and it's very difficult to deal with. You, that's why Lycans, you know, picked your band first most often um, in any pro Dota game. And the only team that really feels comfortable against Lycans seems to be evil geniuses. They seem to find a way to deal with it most of the time, much like they'll find a way to deal with almost every hero like a Death Prophet. So that's a, that's something that Complexity and every other team have to work on. Uh, again, the game's not over yet, obviously. They're doing a nice job of pushing up the lane, but yeah. as long as Union have somebody up here in this top lane to push it out and you know force TP rotations back then their base is essentially safe this is very difficult and 4, I don't know what you do for Z freak and Maelstrom looks better and better against this rat oh, yeah. so we'll see what kind of item he decides to buy he, you know he also maybe a possibility he goes for something like a Lincoln's oh oh no nope. fair off mark maybe a possibility he goes for something for like a Lincoln's though to try to secure uh, a lasso for either 
the Bat Rider or, uh, you know, being able to send in Swindle Mounds a bit easier. Uh, the biggest problem, again, is that Refresher just does not really care about most of those things, so. I don't think this is a Lincoln's game just because there's no real I think it's target. Probably, yeah, I think it's probably like a Mule or something like that. They take the tier one tower bottom, but that and, and as long as the top lane is safe, they're okay with that. They don't even care if they lose the tier two no, bottom. They, and they have to push in this top. Yeah, lane. They have, this they the have to equalize. They have, if they get Rax's top, then, you know, the split push becomes much less dangerous because then they don't have to deal with, you know, a pushing in lane for the rest of the game. This could be a huge fight. We'll find out. Ag's Refresher is available for Ben Haas. He is standing way in the back. He knows that he is the target here for complexity. And he's just waiting for that lasso to be used. There's the first silence, and they're actually going to move out of the base and initiate second silence. Doesn't have enough mana for the second silence. That's a huge problem. Swindle Mounds, he's going to go down without the ultimate off. Is going to immediately buy back, come back into the fight. Does he have BOTs? No. So he is going to be moving very slow. Moon Meander, he's dead as well. And, well, I think this game might be near impossible now for Complexity. Even without the second ultimate, they're able to just convincingly take this fight. Z-Freak is on the way out, and... You know, I'm not sure he's making it out of this one. There's the double edge. In come the glaives. And complexity, I don't think they're going to be able to get it done now. It's it's going to be really hard. They're going to try to fight again. I don't know I mean, if they know that the second global didn't get off. It's still because He still doesn't have enough mana for it. Yeah, I don't know if it matters. So he's going to have it pretty soon. soon. He might have it. There it is. Oh, what a time. But he BKB's out of it now. He, he will split, split but... I don't know if this is going to do anything. BOT's back in from Z-Freak. Now, look, he gets stunned up. That's great and all, but if they only get that kill, it's not worth it. Meanwhile, Sidoru is stuck, uh, stuck on the backside. Ben Haas will fall. Double kill now coming out for Swindle and Blink away from Sidoral. Complexity now the top need to just racks. shove it into the base right now. Yeah, they need to they really walk need up to hill and immediately just start killing it. But here comes some buybacks. Darky moves in. There's the Stampede. Swindle mounts four staff back, but... Complexity need to make something happen here, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. There's the BKB on Sidoral. He's trying to come back in and just start killing Swindle Mons. He is going to go down limp, pops his own. Lasso's available. Is he going to try to use it on Darky? He's able to take wow. down one. Grabs Ben has. He's going to take him down. Complexity, they have a window of opportunity now to push into the base. They have to do it immediately. Sidoral, he is back into this one. Just bought back, but no ultimate, and they're going to finally get the racks. But that was an enormous effort for Complexity and an extremely valiant defense from Union Gaming. And just barely, just barely, Complexity are able to get the racks, and that is going to help them quite a bit for, obviously, for the gold differential, because top lane now is going to be naturally pushing in to UG's base until they take that racks. So it becomes a lot easier for them now to start taking other lanes of racks. And what a huge result for Complexity Gaming in that That fight. was unbelievable. You and I, I think, were both thinking that after that first engagement coming out, Union had every opportunity to just, just sit back, farm, and maybe just pressure top lane to get the racks eventually. But Complexity tried to force the issue, and it ends up working despite it being extraordinarily hectic. I thought for sure that all of a sudden, Sidoral is going to be able to go in and right-click with his, uh, his Lycan Wolf form and just do some work, but Z-Freak actually got online with that right-click. Yeah, he bought back, he BT'd in, he manted up, he right-clicked him down. It did so much work, and the Assault Kuras, I think, was part of the issue as well. Swindle Mounds was still alive. Mm -hmm. The Assault Kuras debuff oh, is They're going to move again. Though. They're going to try to kill Sidoral. He does have ultimate available. There is no arrow. I think he might make it out of this one, but... Yeah, that's BKB charge, though. And exactly. So. The ultimate, not a huge deal, but that BKB charge is pretty valuable, so... Very, very good result there for Complexity, and we took a look at the graphs right after that fight, and it is getting ugly now for Union Gaming after that game. I mean, that was basically, you know, the fulcrum of the game right there. I think if Complexity don't, don't get that Rax, then uh, the game is not impossible, very, very, very hard, but since they're able to force it through, it opens up some doors for them, and... Well, we'll see if they're able to take advantage of uh, that little gold, well, huge gold lead that they've required. I think the BTs was a huge uh, pickup for complexity because now they can use it at any point in the game just to be able to uh, access the map a lot better. But Swindle Mons might get forced out here. There's the Stampede going Swindle. Oh, I can't boy. blink away Stomp up Global. Yeah, he's, he I think, going dead. to fall. He has no buyback either, so he's dead for 96 seconds. That's actually gigantic. Yeah, bought back in the last fight, had to walk all the way back, and, uh, well, he's going to be dead for quite a while now. Without your Brewmaster, we've seen exactly what happens to Complexity. However, again, Z Freak starting to get online. He actually just purchased up a Maelstrom, and he's pushing into the top lane. Not that there's much to push into there, but 
I don't know what you do in this scenario if you're complexity. You have to defend your tier three tower. I mean, they have things still up and they have glyph, so. Yeah, they also have like macro pyre and you know stuff like that. And oh no, radiant courier dies. There is nothing on that one, but still extra gold for them. Look at this. They have to actually TP back because Moon Meander's in the base and Yule's TP. He actually is going to make it barely. Darky was out of range of that stun. He wasn't there, so smart play from Moon. He'll make it out alive, and all that complexity, or rather, you didn't get off the backside of a kill on Swindle is just a tier 2 tower, and they even expended wards for that. Meanwhile, at the top lane, a couple of the huts and buildings got cleared out, so uh, the creeps have a bit more room. And the tier 4 tower chip damage is, is below half health now in this first one at the top lane area, so it now complexity pings out uh, the Roche Pit. They know that it'll be up soon. In fact, 1 minute and 20 seconds for that. By that time, you have your Brewmaster up. Maybe you think about putting the Aegis on him this time around because he might not be able to get his uh, Primal Split off the first time. Whereas before, that wasn't necessarily the issue. This time, I think it might be so. Yeah, well, Smoke here for the Shadow Shaman. He's going to try to find a way to re-engage here. And, you know, if UG can start the fight on their own terms, things can go pretty well for them. Uh, we saw what happened in that first engagement top. When they get the engagement on their terms, they're going to be able to use the silence appropriately. You know, not waiting for that silencer to get engaged on or something like that. So, maybe the smoke enables something like that to happen. But, Union Gaming now are pretty much compressed to their base. There's some very good offensive wards here by the Dyer as well to just sort of contain Union. Jericho, what are you doing that far outside oh the base? Is, why? Uh, I don't dead. know why you're there. And that's That feels like it's, you know, that's happened a couple times. Yeah, it really has. There's absolutely no reason for him to be out that far when they have such, like you just mentioned, aggressive map control from Complexity. It's like, they know that there's wards out there, you know? So, again, just a poor pick off. Um, they do, the, the, the big thing about the Enchantress, too, is that she could just enchant oh, some man. of those Necro units, so. What a time for Complexity. Oh, God, I hope they don't. Go back in. Oh, Go God. Back in. Please. Moon. All right, he's All right. got it. Moon's got it. No, he's like, oh, it is up, and this is Cheese Roach, so pretty big deal for Complexity if they're able to secure this one, and slowly they're just fighting their way through this game, but, you know, one huge lost team fight can very easily be a set of racks or more with the farm that Citarol has uh, picked up for himself, and, you know, the Blink Dagger has also sort of done its job. He hasn't really died, he hasn't really gotten picked off since purchasing it. Yeah, I mean... It's not going to help you in a straight man fight, but it'll help you for doing what he's trying to accomplish the, this entire game, which has been pushing up and, and trying to take a top set of racks. But um, now it becomes the moment where Blink Dagger's not really helping him out that much because he can't push up top really that safely. Um, and mid and bottom are being all constantly pressured. Now there's smoke for complexity. So yeah. they also have a BKB and the Jakiro. Moon is actually nowhere near, but he does have bots, so not the biggest deal. Um, and he's they'll push up the, the Aegis, push up bottom. Swindle Melons has the cheese, and uh, Complexity, I think they're looking to close this one out with this push. Yeah, I mean, the good thing for Union is they have buybacks on all the heroes, with the exception of the Shadow Shaman, who, as long as he gets his ward off, wards off, it doesn't really matter if he dies yeah, or not. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, the Hex is good, but there's a lot of BKBs now, and uh, Mjolnir is now finished with Z-Freak, and he is transitioning from support to core, and... His farm is really good, honestly. It's gone really well for him. He never actually Oh, God, in the Ancients, though. Swindle Mounds is stuck. He does have BKB. Is he going to use it? No, he's just going to die. Does have buyback. Immediately going to come back into the fight. There's the BKB for Moon. The second silence is coming out, but Limp, he pops his own. BKB, Darky is dragged. They don't have enough damage to kill him. Jericho's here. They want to bring him down. He does have quite a bit of damage at this point with the level 3 on the Impetus, and... Big clash there, but not a lot of deaths. I think only the Brewmaster dying, and well, is that now both ultis? To... That's both yeah, global, that's both so global. this game might exactly. might just be uh, a. Now you have to defend without two global silences. There wasn't a boss for the Brewmaster to get right back into the fight, so that's a bit unfortunate. Dark is going to jump on Moon Meander. Great defensive disruption. Now jumping at Swindles, looking to ult here. He's going to throw up the drug at Hazel Lucky, gets blown up. Now they're looking for the tier three. Here comes the ultimate coming out from the Lycan Swindle. Might pop his ultimate. There it goes. Now they'll chase after Jericho or Benja. I'm not sure which one, but they're pushing them back. Meanwhile, the base is being under siege here. Up in the air is the Lycan. The rack's about to fall. That's a melee. Jericho getting demonic purged. Ice path. He'll be about to fall. Lycan now trying to jump it, but he silenced her. Cyclone again, and Benja gets arrowed up after the use of the lasso. Darky in trouble. He'll fall as well. Buybacks everywhere, but Citarol, he'll fall. Does he have buyback? 
No, he's done, and that's it. GG. Complexity on the back end of a missed opportunity from Union Gaming with that double global. They take down the last set of racks, or well, second set of racks, and thus ending the game. Yeah, and you know, you have to say, a lot of that game definitely comes down to Swimmel Melons through and through. Wrecked his lane, enabled them to get off to an early advantage with that blink dagger, and Complexity take that one uh, fairly convincingly. You know, it looked a little sketchy there for a bit, but then they win that team fight and do not let the game get even close to back in Union's hands, so... Nice fight there by the, the relatively new complexity uh, team, and, well, I think we're going to be seeing them.